Okay, in this video we're going to look at a theorem that's related to finding the discrete root of a number. And so the theorem reads as follows. So let's suppose that uh, there is a primitive root modulo n and that the GCD of a and n is 1, so they're relatively prime. Then this equation x to the m is congruent to a mod n. So in other words, uh, x in this case would be something like the mth root of a mod n. So this, e this congruence has a solution if and only if a to the power of phi of n divided by d is congruent to 1 mod n. And in this case, d is equal to the GCD of m, which was this exponent, and phi of n. Good. Now furthermore, if there's any solution at all, then there are exactly d solutions. Good. So we either have zero solutions or we have d solutions. Okay. Let's look at the proof. So the first thing that we want to do is let r be a primitive root modulo n. So we assume that such a primitive root exists and then uh, we're, we're going to set x equal to r to the k. Good. And then a is equal to r to the index of a. Good. So that means this linear, con sorry, this congruence is equivalent to the following. So x to the m congruent to a mod n is equivalent to um, r to the m k, which is congruent to r to the i r a mod n. So I haven't done anything here. I've just rewritten these with some aliases. So obviously, if x is r to the k, then uh, x to the m is r to the mk, and so on and so forth. Okay, good. And then we know that this is equivalent to some linear congruence where we uh, remove the exponents, but when we remove the exponents from the bases, um, we have to work modulo the order of r, which in this case is modulo phi of n, so which is, this is equivalent to m times k congruent to um, the index n r of a modulo phi of n. So remember, the whole terms work modulo n, but the exponents work mod phi n. So that's a, that's a big thing to remember whenever working with any problem of this form. Okay, good. So now notice, we can solve this for k. Um, exactly when we have a certain condition, and this certain condition we proved earlier, and that is if and only if D divides this index IRA, good, where D equals the GCD of M with phi of N. So let's look at that. So we're taking the GCD of this with this, and that thing has to divide uh, this index. Good, so that should look familiar from the theory of uh, solving linear congruences. Okay, good, but um, <clears throat> now that's equivalent to the following. So this is equivalent to uh, phi of n divided by d times i r a is congruent to zero mod phi of n. Okay, so uh, let's unpack that. So notice uh, if we take um, phi of n times i r divided by d, that'll be the LCM of uh, phi of n and i r, which in other words, it's a multiple of each, so it's a multiple of phi of n, which makes it zero mod phi of n. 
And so now we want to take this congruence and put it back into the exponential form, and that will make this as follows. So this will be the same thing as um, a to the uh, phi of n over d uh, is congruent to 1 mod n. Okay, so now what did we do here? We took this congruence and raised everything to the, or we put everything in the exponent of r. So now r to the 0 will be 1, and then r to this so we can use our index rule to uh, bring this into the exponent of the index, and then we have um, r to the power of the index of r in a, which is just a, which leads us to this. Okay, good. So now that uh, finishes this proof of the condition of when there is a solution. So now I'll just talk through um, how many solutions there are. So recall that uh, this linear congruence has a solution exactly when D divides this I R A, um, but this linear congruence has exactly D solutions in that case, and again, that's by a previous result that we proved for linear congruences. So that finishes the entire argument. Okay, so that's the end of the proof.